library, what we call magazines. Magazines. Okay. So you also at BLSC level, now that you have come to BLSC level in the scholarly communication, you need to understand the difference between what is a magazine and what is a journal. A magazine needs for lighter not for very serious, you know, it's not very scholarly. For example, journals like India, typical example. India today is not, we don't call it scholarly, it's a magazine. Okay, so magazines are those, you don't have to be a subject specialist to understand what is written in a magazine. Whereas to understand what is public, what is written, in a journal, you need to be an expert in that. You need to be at least a post graduate. Madam, there are a few minutes. Madam, there are a few minutes. Madam, there are a few minutes. Madam, please mute yourself. Madam, please share your screen. Please share your screen. Please mute your screen. Please mute your screen. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Veta. In the class, Amma. You are in the class. Please realize that you are in the class. Please understand you are the class. You are in the class. Please mute yourself. You are causing a lot of nuisance to others. Students, please mute yourself. Okay. Sir, all the voices in the group level remove and sir, I put it. I think I just said it's ever later than that. It's a problem. Sir, actually, sir, it's a problem. Post mute change, sir, under me. Sir, under me. आपको एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर स्टेटस लेते हैं नहीं तो ये लगने पार्टिसिपेंट इतना बच्चा है ना नहीं इनके टाइम आई एम जॉइनिंग फ्रॉम माय हाउस मैं यूनिवर्सिटी ले ले स्टूडेंट्स प्लीज स्विच ऑफ योर माइक्रोफोन पोस्ट चपाली सर म्यूट चेंडर सर रावी कुमार सर पोस्ट का उन्नार का था सर की चपाली म्यूट चेंडर माने सांदर में किरण नन्ना राव किरण का ने यशवंत का ने किरण का ने कंप्यूटर सेंटर लावरा वाला थे नन्ना राव एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर सर किरण ना माना स्टूडेंट ने म्यूट चाहिए आला यार ना कंट्रीशन इस तरह से तरह म्यूट चाहिए आले लेकिन चालू किस तरह से क्लास ओके सरे सरे Uh, as I said, uh, we have a variety of scholars to which we communicate. These scholars communicate among themselves. And in the library, we subscribe to several of these things. Veta, please mute yourself, Amma. Greta, please mute yourself. Students, have to mute yourself, Amma. 
రవికుమార్ మీరు ఉంటే కనుక మ్యూట్ చేస్తారా అందరిని ప్లీజ్ మ్యూట్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ ఇంక్లూడింగ్ మీ ఐ విల్ రన్ విత్ మై సెల్ఫ్ మెటీరియల్స్ దట్ ఐ హీన్ టెలింగ్ యూ Uh, be in the library be subscribe to many of these resources so that users come to the library and make use of these parallelly resources nowadays uh, thanks to the uh, the internet uh, now last 10 to 15 years a lot of changes are taking place in library the reading the way people read the way people you know seek information in a library as you know in the post internet era that is after 1995 in india uh, from 2000 past 2022 years so internet uh, has a tremendous impact and libraries are not an exception so whatever we used to buy previously as print materials scholarly print materials like that are now um, are being made available in electron like digital form so the the, the the print based books that we used to buy in a library or the journals that we subscribe in a library are increasingly becoming available in online or digital format now so now as librarians what we are doing is we are we are enabling access of these electronic or digital materials to the library to the scholars that visit the library or increasingly they don't know how to now physically come to the library previously physically people used to come to the library but nowadays what we do from library is we provide access maybe you give some kind of a user id password just as you are given a user id password today to join the class so we may be giving user id passwords to our library users so that wherever they are they can access the material subscribed by the library sometimes in a, in more advanced situations so we may not even assign user id password whoever is on the university or the institute's network you know once you are inside the campus let us say in a college or a university or a research institute once you once the user is inside the campus automatically the campus wide network provides access to all these scholarly resources so we call them ip enabled you know through the to the university id once you log in to the university network or a research institute network your official network you know you automatically get access to all the resources that the library provides so now some of these materials are available only on payment we call them as subscribed scholarly materials so not everything is free on the internet. for still lot of scholarly material approximately we believe that approximately 70% of the material 70% of the reading material that is available in the world is behind paywalls behind paywall means you need to pay for the usage of the content it's not available free of course you need to pay for it pay means individual users need not pay for it the library pays on behalf of the users suppose i am in a university library i am a librarian in a university library or a college library or a research laboratory i subscribe to a particular scholarly journal or a particular encyclopedia okay so then i make payment you know on behalf of the organization to the publisher maybe most of them most of the cases we make annual payment 
payment. We make these payments once in a year. These subscriptions once in a year. So once we make the payment, the access is provided to whoever is a bona fide user of the university, college, or the research institute, or that particular library, bona fide user of that particular library. So who is a bona fide user? The library decides who is a bona fide user. And now, I said 70% is behind paywalls or are under, under pay services. But then we also have about 30% of the scholarly content published today in the world, which we, is what we call under open access. Okay. So today we are learning the, the chapter seven. Chapter seven is all about open access. When your course material, that will one chapter. The chapter heading is open access. So today, the as for the schedule, I'm supposed to teach you unit seven, eight, and nine. So unit seven is all about open access. Open access is something which is available without any kind of a payment. Without any kind of a payment. For example, all of you are familiar with Google search engine. We all use Google. You, know, you may Google is you can actually you can use make use of the Google search engine either on your smartphone or your laptop or desktop. It's available free of cost. Google is a free set. Similarly, we have Wikipedia. Wikipedia is also an, an encyclopedia, a scholarly encyclopedia. It's written cooperatively by thousands and thousands of scholars around the world. So Wikipedia also we call it as an open access resource. So similarly, there are many, many resources which are under open access. The word open access means you don't have to pay any fee for it. You can just access it. Okay? And among these open access content, there are a variety of materials that are available on the internet. We as librarians need to be Sensitive about what is available and what if you, and, and how, what is the best way of making use of these open access and then how to how to how to how to uh, how to make our users you know the scholars or the faculty that visit the library so how to help the users in in making use of making the best use of the free content available on the internet this free content free scholarly content we call it as open access. So we and, and librarians around the world are actually crusaders. They, they promote the open access in a big way. Open access is there today it's because of the lobbying, a lot of cooperative efforts done by librarians around the world. We librarians believe that content, you know, reading material should be made available free of cost whoever wants it, you know, just as we, the, the philosophy behind this, just, just as we breathe air, you know, we don't pay for the air that we breathe, is it not? So similarly, why, which, why somebody should pay for, for reading the content, you know, and especially on the internet. That is the philosophy behind that. So we believe that reading material or information, broadly speaking, we believe that information should be accessible without any restrictions. And if and information, uh, we all believe that is crucial for human development. So if, if more information is made available free of cost, more human development, more civilization will improve, but the disparities between haves and have nots will disappear. We will have a better world. So that is the philosophy behind, behind the, the librarians promoting the open access. Uh, you are able to hear me now? Are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, great, yes, sir. Great, 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 great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so open access is something, you know, it, it's it to, to be, be, uh, be democratized access to information in open access. 
So we, in, under open access, we have, as I said, we have encyclopedias. Wikipedia is a classical example. We have databases also available under open access. A lot of databases available under open access. Actually, when you move to the second semester, uh, we have again written some books on, on, on electronic resources. In that, again, we will teach you the various, more, we will go a little more de de in deep into the, into the content that is available free of cost on the various databases, etc. But in scholarly communication, we understand at this point today, the content that is available without any restriction. Okay? So, so we have journals available free of cost. We don't have to pay. Anybody can access those journals. We have books that are available free of cost. We have databases that are available free of cost. We have dictionaries available free of cost. Similarly, a variety of a variety of reference sources are also available on the internet without subscription. So as librarians, we try to understand what are all those. Suppose you are working in the chemistry research institute or you are working in a bank like us. So in, in your subject domain, as a librarian, you need to understand what are all the free resources available on the internet. So that you make you make a list of those things, you make a catalog, a directory of all the free resources available in your subject domain. And maybe you put it, if you create a website, you, you put it on your library website through the library portal. So as a librarian, you can make them available to the, to the library users. Because all users may not be sensitive, may not be aware of various, the plethora, hundreds and hundreds of free resources are available. So from the examination point of view, open access is again important. So uh, because that is, the, that is the trend that is happening around the world. So you are sure to get a question and open access exam. So if you get a question in the exam, you need to say that, Open access is making content available to the user community without paying for it. They are not behind paywalls. So another advantage about this open access material is one can access them anywhere, anywhere, anytime. So there are uh, different kinds of open access. The delivery mechanisms are, are slightly different. In the exam, you need to also write about delivery mechanism. So we have something called gold open access. Gold open access and green open access. We have given written them in the book we will have made available to you. So gold open access is perhaps the best way of making content, putting content in the open access medium. So what we mean by golden gold open access is Content becoming accessible immediately after publication. Immediately after publication, without any restriction, right from the publisher's side. Suppose I'm a journal publisher. Imagine I'm, I publish a journal. So whenever, suppose today, today morning, 10 o'clock, a new issue is published. So the moment a new issue is published, it should be made available immediately instantly without any restrictions to people around the globe, around the world, without any geographic restriction, be made available immediately on publication. Such a phenomena, we call it as gold open access. That is the best way of making content, in the, putting the content in the open access domain. We also have another phenomena called green open access. So green open access is also good. In green open access, what we do is, suppose I publish a journal article. When I publish a journal article, the journal is a copyright publication. So the journal may be a copyright publication. So the journal is not available free of cost. You know, if some people have to pay for it, pay for it. But as an author, as an author, I have a right to disseminate. I have some rights as an author. Okay, so if, we are, if I am a faculty member or a scientist in a research laboratory, what I do is I give a copy of my article to my librarian. The author, author's copy. The librarians get the author's copies. These author's copies 
got the library in Nazis, keep it in the form of a portal. We call it a repository, an institutional repository. Pushpalata, please mute Amma. Pushpalata, please mute your screen. Please, please stop sharing. Please mute your mic. Okay, thank you. So, green open access is a is, is a phenomenon where the originally the content is not free of, available free of cost from the publisher's website. The librarian or the author makes the content available in his or personal website or the library website. For example, I am a librarian in a particular research laboratory. The works of my research laboratory, the, the articles written by my research scientists or my, by my faculty, I collect them from individual authors and then I keep it on the library website, you know, we call it a repository, institutional repository. I make it available through a repository. That means it's not a direct way of making open access. An indirect way, I make the content available. Since, it, since as an author, I have a right to share my content to my fellow authors or fellow readers. So, under copyright, we have something called fair use. Some kind of relaxations are there under copyright. For research purpose, for personal use, for non-commercial purposes, we can break the copyright law in a limited way. So we make use of that phenomena called the fair use under the Copyright Act, and then make it available to the library website or the institutional website in a limited way to the for personal reading of the fellow researchers. So this kind of provision is called in open access. Similarly, we also have delayed open access. In delayed open access, what happens is today a particular book or a journal is published. So after six months, it, 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 it comes into the open access domain. That is called delayed access. The first three months or first six months, it is available only to the subscribed people. So later on, it becomes open. We call it delayed open access. So as librarians, we keep tabs on these things, you know, which are all the resources that are in gold open access, that is made that content that is available immediately on publication, content that is available maybe three months, six months after publication. So those things we, we keep, we, 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 we keep track of those things and provide links to our researchers, our users through the library. So that is the role of librarians in open access. Screen share second. Somebody is sharing the screen. So in the book, we have given some of the uh, initiatives of open access, uh, like PLOS, Public Library of Science. You can visit these websites on, on, on your phone or on laptop, PLOS. PLOS is Public Library of Science. So this is a major portal where science content, scholarly scientific content is available free of cost. That is a model of gold open access. PLOS follows Gold open access model. Similarly, we have a we have a directory called BOAJ, Directory of Open Access Journals. Sometimes you may get a short notes question in the exam on some of these. Like what is BOAJ, Directory of Open Access Journals? So someone uh, actually Lund University, a university in Europe. So what the, the library people have done is they have made a catalog, a nice directory of all the free journals available in the world today. Yeah? Made a beautiful book. So that is that is called DOAJ. DOAJ dot O-R-G. You can even Google it, DOAJ, and you will have a link to it. DOAJ is a single portal where 
where you can access the 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 world's entire scholarly journal literature uh, free of we have in that now currently we have about about 11000 journals are there. approximately 11000 journals are available free of cost that's approximately one third of what is published in the world in different domains but you see mostly in, in medicine in biology we have huge content in open in, in different subjects or different ways of food. making access but in chemistry we don't find much of open access in physics we don't find but in biology we have huge open access content similarly in medicine also uh similarly we also have arxiv we have given it in the book it is arxiv.org okay <clears throat> this is also an archive of uh, of, of scientific kind you will find mostly the physics and mathematics content in, in arxiv clearly we have pubmed p u b m e d pubmed pubmed is a portal of the national library of medicine america it is physically it is in washington dc a national library of medicine they have pioneered the, the, the open access from the world they the flagship database the bedline that we call it's a wonderful global database for for, for medical research that is a database itself is available call now pubmed we can also try on the uh, internet pubmed.c the wonderful database created by library people for health care workers health researchers clinicians doctors researchers scientists the wonderful database pubmed available in open so they as a as as, as a companion to the pubmed they also have pubmed central pubmed central you can google pubmed central and you will you will get the link okay pubmed central is a place where The, the the entire content of journals is made available full text content is made available uh, through the uh, national library of medicine so though it is med- national library of medicine it's much more than medicine they take medicine in the very broad sense you have medicine you have biology uh, you have some chemistry you have some physics you have some social sciences as well in that in, in connection with In, in in connection with improving the healthcare of human suffering similarly in agriculture also we have huge uh, open access for example fkao food and agriculture organization united they have a huge database called agris a g r i s and their content is available all their resources are available here Similarly, in, in nuclear science, in this INIS, the entire bit that is from the International Atomic Energy Agency, the, for the, the, all the scholarly content relating to the peaceful uses of the nuclear science, this is made available. Next. Similarly, in India also, the Indian Library, we Indian libraries also. Uh, have done a lot of work for making content uh, available in open access and uh, now it's a rule rather compulsory for all uh, libraries in department of science and technology government of india to make the to make the, the research publication of their respective organizations put it in the they are putting it in the open access in the form of an institutional report Uh, and it is now mandated in, in india especially in the, in the government research organization it mandatory for the organization to put the put the full text of all the articles uh, published with government grants in open access same is the case in uk uk government was the first uk government also has passed an order saying that any research conducted with the uk government support publications coming out that should be made available to the public yes 
Tim is the case with NIH, National Institute of the largest science funding body in the world, which is USA. Even they have mandated that anybody receiving any research support from NIHS, the research publications coming out of that must be made in open access. So thanks to all these uh, initiated by various governments, you know, governments have also come out with various initiatives and we librarians also have picked up this and took the advantage of that. And we are also participating in a big way. You know, please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Please mute yourself. Please mute your microphone. Don't share your screen. You are disturbing us. Mr. Bukia Slino, please mute yourself. Please mute. Okay. We also need to understand in open access that in open access, sometimes you get a short notes and we are, we are all aware of copyright. So copyright is the situation where the rights of the publisher, the rights of the authors are protected. The copyrighted material is not supposed to be produced. It, it, it is illegal to do that. But then, then to overcome some of these issues to, to, to enhance the free flow of information, so some of the activists, librarians, then some uh, act, social activists they have come out with what a phenomenon called copy left. You are, you are all aware of copyright. In the book, we have introduced the new phenomena, copy left. So copy left is it's not total opposite of copyright, but copy left is a situation where we make content available with few restrictions. Few restrictions. Okay? And then under copy left, we have what we call creative commons license. Suppose I write a book or I write a course material. If I put it under copy left, what I mean is I say for educational purposes, I have no problem if you reproduce my content. Okay? Personal reading, I have no problem. So, so, so I give I, I put some kind of a restrictions in the in the in the copy left phenomena. Copy left is not hundred, it is free. Still, with some little bit restrictions, and what are those restrictions? The the, the person who is creating that license have the have the option to say, and there are a variety of options are available. For example, I can say that the the my material is available for non-commercial purposes only. Okay, don't make money. Use my material, but don't make money. Don't sell it. I don't allow it. I don't allow it to be. Commercially exploited. As long as you don't sell it, I have no problem. Please make use of it. For free access, there is no problem. From if a library is promoting, I have no problem. But don't charge money for this. For the open access kind. So that 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 is that. Those are some of the flavors under the creative commons. Some say uh, you can use my content, but acknowledge my source. As long as you acknowledge my source, I have no problem. Don't say that you are the source of that. You acknowledge. Acknowledge that you have taken it from so and so person. So please acknowledge. As long as you acknowledge, I have no problem. In this. Sometimes we say, uh, you can use my source, you can use my material, but don't meddle with it. Don't change the content. Don't, don't, and it, you, you use it in the way I have given it. Don't change it. Sometimes, some, 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 some situations we can say, uh, I say, I have no problem if you make some derivatives of what I mean by derivatives is, suppose today uh, I'm speaking to you in English and scholarly communication. So suppose my video recording is made available to you. Then my video recording, if somebody has a problem in understanding my English, 
what if somebody can do is you can we can give a telugu voice over or urdu voice over or hindi voice over. so so we can, we can we can you can change the language you can translate or transliterate it to make to enhance its usability so we call them as a derivative suppose there is an english language video okay you put some subtitles that is you know you add some subtitles or you add some subtitles in a different language so you enhance utility we call them derivatives so sometimes we say uh, i have no problem even if you use it commercially i don't care about it if you want if you are if somebody is making money out of my book i don't care about it. as long as people use it it's fine so that like kind of a license is called even commercial uses i have no problem use it it, it is i am giving it 100% open access you do whatever you want i have no i, I don't care if you sell my content but i am giving it here that kind of a thing these kind of licenses we have given them in the book on page number 81 it is called creative commons to understand those creative commons sometimes you may get a short notes in the exam on on the creative commons okay creative and sometimes this is also comes under copy left copy left as this set is that is creating some minimum restrictions some kind of restrictions in the in the in the, in the open access environment then now we will move on to the other unit the other unit is unit 8 unit 8 is what is library in school in this whole process of the community is there any role for library what is it that we do in a library as far as kalali community so librarians uh, traditionally have a role to preserve the reading material for we preserve material we are specialists in preserving that okay suppose if it is in a print form let us say we have a printed printed we believe that any any printed material is is printed on acid paper and if it is maintained well in a library temperature moisture etc well in a library environment uh, there is no problem for up to 75 Uh, if you make if you put some kind of an air conditioning and then moisture control humidity control in in the in the lab dehumidifier if you put in the library you can enhance the life of a paper based book to 100 years or 125 years in some cases even 150 for a century you can preserve it. but in case of digital content the life of a digital content is a big question mark paper we have some record in our libraries of been preserving it for 100 150 years 200 years but now digital content has many serious issues with digital content because of the change of the medium change of the format etc so but then in spite of all the problems we librarians are involved in preserving the even the digital content, depending upon what is technology available today and we we keep updating our technology and then we also keep updating the, the we also keep migrating the content from one kind of format to another format some kind of media for example previously in the library we used to have a lot of cd roms now cd roms are no more in uh, popular no in, no are not not that popular Now, if you buy a laptop, you don't get it. The CD will not be there. CD drive may not be there for a new laptop. Don't buy it. Like, so how do we play this CD? So, so when we when these uh, you know <laughs> storage media keep changing, then uh, with the advent of technology, we also in life is what we do. We 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 switch over to hard disk, whatever is the latest available. You know, we keep changing. so we have a role librarian's role is to preserve the content of posters so a lot of libraries do it around now then we as i said the the, the promotion of open access so librarians are around the world are promoting the open access this is another area where librarians are having a role promoting around the world similarly 
we also we like this also help the users the scholarly communication process itself suppose uh, you have phd students coming to me right they want to write their writing a phd thesis is part of scholarly come to the nowadays people come to the library with their laptop there is a scholars in you know, after spending four years or five years in a university for phd work at the end you know they write a phd so and they come to the library take the help of the librarian for writing the PhD. we help them in, so how we how we help them we help them in in in, in formatting the reference for example the bibliography at the end of the thesis Sometimes there may not be the other spelling may not be correct. The volume number may not be there, and the, the starting page, ending page may not be correct. Please, please, please switch off your video. Please switch off your video. Somebody has switched on the video. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So we are helping in the in the process of this communication, like writing a PhD. Okay, how to write a PhD? How to provide references for writing a PhD? Similarly, if somebody is publishing in a now publishing or not, where to publish? Which are the best channels to publish? So and and then we are also helping in the evaluation of scholarship. Just as we evaluate what is a good book, what is a not that good book, you know, as a, like a good librarian will be able to recommend what are good, like good books in a given subject. Similarly, we also know which are the best journals and how do we do that? We have we have scales for doing for, for knowing that. We have a variety of metrics. We 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 understand the metrics is the quantitative measures. So so we advise the users on which are the best channels. So similarly, which are the best database. Similarly, uh, which are which are trustworthy resources. Please mute yourself. Please mute. Somebody is disturbing. Please mute. Please mute. Understand the quality of the scholarly content that we submit, and we advise the users on what is qualitative. Similarly, we are also into publishing now. Libraries are all libraries are also into publishing. Now, previously, publishing used to be very. Now we have a lot of publishing platforms, open access publishing platforms are available. So librarians are assisting the organizations, the parent organizations, in starting a journal, starting an open access journal, starting a repository, starting an archive. You know? So create the, the internally generated content is made available with the help of libraries. So librarians are taking the role of publishers now. So, so in many of the organizations. So libraries now previously libraries were used to only to collect material, but now we also publish material for our own material. Then we we also help in maintaining research 
and you know in scholarly communication also have a have a great role so as in uh, just uh, uh, parallel to the free flow of information parallel to the internet to technologies you know uh, a lot of ethical project like for example whenever a new technology emerges whenever something a new facility emerges you know so there are uh, there are the, there are the right way of using that and there is also a wrong way of using it we have people who make use of uh, any any facility in the right way and people there are also some people who make use of the facility the systems in the wrong way so as a librarians we need to sensitize our users on wrong practice one of the wrong practices that happens in scholarly communication especially after the advent of technology is what we call plagiarism plagiarism is copying somebody's and copy paste kind of phenomena you don't create your own content you copy from somebody else and then claim it as you so plagiarism is all about wrongful attribution of authorship to particular okay that is part of ethics part of public research librarians also are now torch bearers of ethic in an article so now so we have, there are now software packages available for plagiarism check plagiarism again is a, it's a question for you in the exam what is plagiarism you may get a question so plagiarism is the wrongful attribution of that is you don't create that you copy from somebody and then claim that you have it is something like intellectual theft you, you, you know you steal some content from somebody and then claim it as you claim as if is yours as if you have made okay you don't do research you you copy you steal somebody else's research data you steal somebody else's research data and publish it as yours this is something great uh, problem in, in especially in science we find that problem then uh, we have some mechanical methods like the, we have some software for putting uh, the now for india for example before anyone submits a phd thesis to a university it is now compulsory that the thesis should be subjected to a software called an anti plagiarism check is is now compulsory made compulsory for users for about two years now yeah so, and this plagiarism check is invariably done by the content like so we have couple of after packages there is one called urban which gcc is making available for the alternate in is another one alternate is getting more expensive than so so library buys these uh, software packages in spas they can be like so anybody before publishing or before submitting a thesis they come to the library they to the soft copy of their content the librarian checks it using this one. sir excuse me sir yeah sir screen meda edanna adi meer cheppedi sharing cheyandi sir chustam oh yeah ko sir cheppu adi meer explain chestunnar kada adi ok sari screen paina share cheyandi sir men chustam oh screen pe cheppantara okay okay thank you sir okay cheptale Can you see the screen now? 
సిమిలర్లీ మనకి ఉరుపు ఉండని పోతుంది ఇది లాగిన్ అడుగుతున్నది మనకి వీ ఆల్సో హ్యావ్ సమ్ ఫ్రీ వేర్ ఆల్సో దీస్ ఆర్ పే సర్వీసెస్ వర్క్ ఇస్ ఇస్ నాట్ ఫ్రీ సర్వీస్ ఇట్స్ పే సర్వీస్ యువర్ లైబ్రరీ హ్యాస్ టు సబ్స్క్రైబ్ సిమిలర్లీ టర్న్ టీన్ ఇస్ ఆల్సో నాట్ ఫ్రీ సర్వీస్ యూ నీడ్ టు పే ఫర్ ఇట్ బట్ వీ ఆల్సో హ్యావ్ సమ్ ఫ్రీ టెక్స్ట్ మ్యాచింగ్ సర్వీసెస్ అవైలబుల్ ఇన్ ఆన్ ది ఇంటర్నెట్ గూగుల్ దమ్ so these are some of the areas where librarians are now working similarly i talked about the 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 voh this is again an open access uh, which library we librarians are promoting voh stands for directory of open access so this is in 80 languages from 130 countries we have 12248 journals these are the number of journals available and this is mind boggling this is the number of articles that are available without any fee and access now you can you can also perform a search here for example i want to know about uh, digital library type digital library can read it online we review of digital library after i so there is a button here download on that button called download and so this is the demonstration of what is available free of <laughs> as librarians you you try to propagate this to the the users you tell the what when you are in a library you tell your users to use make use of the directory of open access so similarly we have plos PLOS as a standard it's called the public library of science so these are all the various things that are that are available through the PLOS PLOS medicine public health PLOS one PLOS even water they have So previously, uh, you know, we librarians used to complain that I don't have money, my organization is not giving money for the library, all that. So now we have, we, there is no need to complain all that now. We have a good internet and then uh, we can, you can sensitize your users. They choose freely available content in the internet. So as, as libraries, what we are now doing is we are... identifying what is available for you that to scholarly content, not the classic kind of content we are identifying the scholarly content that are available just as we create catalog just as we catalog the, the content that we buy hello yes good morning please 
please mute yourself again please mute participant please mute yourself similarly we are also uh, doing what we call now data library so previously data also as the raw data as such you know the, the raw research data now data repositories are also but the previously you know the content used to be shared in the form of books then journals then articles then repositories now the raw data itself the research data the instrumental data itself is is being made available free of cost so we call these phenomena called open data is a new concept that is emerging people from government of india so we have a lot of data that is coming in and the source where you have lot of government data for example from indian government is making available <laughs> So we call this new phenomena as data life. Okay. So, so then we coming back to the role of librarian in scholarly communication, as we just so we do plagiarism stuff. we also help in assessment of the quality quality of a particular journal so we have things like uh, for example um, there is something called impact factor is a call citation matrix so this is how an impact factor is created just as we have ratings for the universities for so journals also we have some kind of a ratings so we we make lists of these uh, impact factors and then try to help the readers in identifying which are the best journals they give help in assessing quality of okay now we will move over to the, the chapter 9 the current trends and future of scholarly future of scholarly. let us look at the what is the and you will we are like to get a question here also uh, what uh, in the essay question you will get in the exam and uh, what what uh, what are the what is the future of scholarly communication similarly the end of the chapter eight also is important what is the role of library professionals in scholarly communication that's also important So when you we talk about future of scholarly communication, so what is happening is technology has invaded scholarly communication in a big way. The time lag between a researcher writing his manuscript and then that item being made available to the fellow researcher, the time lag used to be one year. Yeah, now it has come down to few weeks or few months. So technology is helping in a big way. Similarly, similarly, okay. Technol we are using technology in a big way in 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 creating scholarly creation itself. We are using the technology, but creating we are using technology. But for editing, for disseminating, also we are using technology in a big way. Similarly, we are using technology for organizing it in the library, um, for creating the repositories and all, and uh, we are. and lot of free content you know it's not only the free journals free books free software is also available today for handling the scholarly community. for example if you want to create a repository of your institutional publications we have we have a lot of software packages available for for organizing the library so 
open access, not only the, the content, the software also is available. Similarly, the, the another phenomena that we see nowadays, the increasing use of social media in color. So social media is a big trend. So please, will you mute yourself? Look, mute chain number, my video of Sarama. Please mute your video. Okay. <laughs> Current trends of this are most, most of the trends now are the sharing the sharing of the content is a, is a recent phenomenon. And we are sharing the content using social media. Previously, that was not the case. Librarian sharing the content on social media, others sharing the content on social media, publishers sharing the content on social media to the readers. So it's all kinds of communication is happening on the social media. And we <laughs> Actually, when, when somebody writes a book or when somebody writes a scholarly journal article, what we now are doing is you put it on your Facebook page saying that I have published a new paper okay. or add it to your LinkedIn profile. A variety of social media platforms available for us. And this social media is being used in a positively, constructively for enhancing uh, the, the scholarly. So once the moment you put it, announce it on your social media that you have published a paper or written a book, you know. So it, it serves two purposes. One is it enhances your visibility. You know, it's a kind of marketing of your, it enhances your image, you know, by putting your scholarly, by announcing on the social media that you have written an article or you have submitted a PhD thesis or you have written a book, you announce it on your social and give a link to that. Give a URL of that, where, wherever it is available. By doing that, what happens is, by doing that, what happens is. Sir, one minute, sir. Sir, hello. Hello. Rajgari, please ah. mute yourself. Ah, okay, okay, sir. But can you explain in with the slides, sir? I is understanding easily. I am going to go to the house. I am Seven, seven, eight, nine chapters and chapter. Today, now I am talking about chapter nine, current trends and future of scholarly community. Okay. Unit nine, current trends and future of scholarly community. Okay. Let me notes call and you are expecting some notes or what? Not notes, sir. From the lesson, you have to take a slide with the name Mamuka Tepton, and the music at the mouth in the name. At a Mamuka Matagona to the other, sir. And the green carrier, sir. Okay. 
maybe next time we will do that and <laughs> i have a lot of powerpoint presentations but powerpoint pe problem em entante a powerpoint ke restrict aipoyi man cheptadu anta sir konem try cheyandi sir ela feel aithe okay hello hello Okay can you see my slide now Yes sir Okay Yes sir Okay That's what you want no so technology is is being used in a big in the exam if you get first point on in the current trends in scholarly communication is current trends in so we are using technology in a big way so tech, we are using technology for what for creating content we are using Okay. Suppose you want to write a PhD thesis. How do you write a PhD thesis, or how do you write a manuscript? You use your laptop. You use your you use technology, you know, for making it. Is it? So technology is creating in a big way. Creating content we use. Similarly, publishing um, platforms. A lot of publishing platforms are available. For editing, we have software available. Okay. Similarly. Plagiarism. We use technology for plagiarism. That is, somebody has copied. Just this is just to ascertain the quality. We have Wurkun software. So similarly, we have Turnitin. And- you make use of this we use technology with for plagiarism tech okay now similarly we have things like the rss feeds logs and through the these are again through the library so rss feed is some kind of a pushing technology we call it in technology means the moment a new article is published no moment a new journal is published you know you, you send out automatically you send out notices took so and so article is published so and so book is you, these things are called pushing one way is you announce it on your web on your web page that i have you have written some and the other way is who are the subscribing to your rss feed rss feed is a, is a place where people can subscribe to that people will come and then freely they register so who are registers for those feeds in our blogs the people uh, will get notification similarly we also now increasingly calling what we now call web 2.2 web 2.0 so web 2.0 is 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 nothing but internet where Uh, interactions take take interactive web 2.0 is you make content, make it interact we also call it semantic web give some meaning to the interactive web semantic these are the kinds of phenomena that are happening in web 2.0 
So in scholarly communication, what it, previously what is happening is suppose you publish a paper, write a paper, publish a paper, people used to read it and then that's it. But now what happens is when you put it online, suppose I write a book or I write an article. So then you read it online. So when you read it, you, you after reading that, you give your opinion on that. Now major journals, scholarly journals are giving provision for, you can comment on that. You can say, I agree with it, or you can say, this is nonsense, I don't agree with it. You can immediately put your reaction to this column. You can say that, no, no, how can this happen? There is something, something is wrong in this experiment. No, I, I see some problem with it. I don't agree with it. Okay, then the other again will go back and explain. That, that, that means we are, we, we, it, it leads to a lot of scientific discourse, you know, the scholarly discourse. So previously in science in communication, in scholarly communication, it used to be mostly one-sided. So now, uh, thanks to these technologies, now commun scholarly communication has become now two-sided. So you, you, you tell something and then others will react to that in scholarly. This is something new that is happening. This is a recurrent trend in scholarly communication. Similarly, we also find, uh, you know, we also talked about information explosion. Uh, and we call it information explosion. Which the, the volume of information published in this has increased. Okay. This enormous increase in volumes. Huge volume of content is, is, is there, you know, mind walking the way, the rate at which new content is being published. And then the, also the speed at which the speed. Okay. So previously, for example, you take our own corona, for example. And, and the time taken for the doing this as communicating the results, mind body. So within in less than two years, ever, the, the, ever since the corona invaded, they were less than two years, people have done research, they understood, they communicated, a lot of scholarly communications took place, and then people have come out also with remedies for that, you know. Uh, for example, the vaccine, the way vaccines have been developed in the world. Uh, it's all because of scholarly communication. People communicate around the world, you know, from one country, from one place to another place. So, so within less than two years now, we have a situation where we could control the coronavirus, which we thought two years ago that that is the end of the world. We thought in 2020, when, when the first cases we saw in China, we thought uh, it, it may lead to the end of the world, but that, that did not happen. Thanks to the scholarly communication, Thanks to the way scientists have exchanged the, 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 the content of that, thanks to the collaboration that took place. So we now have, you know, uh, how, how scholarly communication, a practical demonstration of how scholarly communication has solved the human problem, like the corona, for example. Speed increasing that speed at which we communicate, we share our. Uh, Similarly, we are also uh, change. There is also a lot of change in habits. A lot of change in the habits of library. And then again, using taking the Corona case for example, around the world for several months, libraries were under lockdown during the lockdown. And since library, and since library, you know, people were worried if somebody comes to the library, touches a book, that will spread the coronavirus. But that had, you know, it, that has been a blessing for us, for libraries. You know, in the, in, the, in the beginning, we were worried what will happen to libraries, what will happen to libraries if people do not come to the library, do not touch the books, do not read, what will happen? 
but then we quickly we librarians have overcome this problem uh, and then we started using the at using the online services so started to, you know very aggressively delivering the content to, to the to various online modes you know, like whether it is social media or giving the remote access but remote access has gained a lot of popularity you know, in the last couple of so so users habits are also changed and libraries are also have coped up accordingly For example, this kind of online teaching, yes, teacher and the student talking to each other, user, uh, each other. This was not happening before Corona. Ambedkar Open University, we always used to have a physical classes. We used to have some Durdarshan video conferencing occasionally, but but mostly it used to be, you know, people used to come to the study centers and then clarify their doubts. This kind of a Zoom class was not there two years ago. Again, this is again an, an area where uh, technology is being used. Then we also have a lot of uh, challenges. We are also having a lot of challenges. We also need to write. Challenges is the, one of the challenges that we face in scholarly information is Fake information. The serious problem in scholarly fake information. Okay. How to authenticate? Who will authenticate? So, like, as a librarian, we know what is a fake book, what is a genuine book. Is it not? So, similarly, we also have uh, the ways of identifying what is fake, what is available. Who, for example, who is a fake author, who is a real author, what is a fake journal, who is a real journal. And we also have things like uh, free data, free data. There is a new phenomena in scholarly communication called predatory journals. So predatory journals is a place where you pay some money It's like you pay some money and get anything published. Okay. If you want an article, if you want a book, you know, you gather something and then pay 10,000 rupees, 20,000 rupees for scholarly communication paper. 24 hours and 48 hours, there are people right in Hyderabad who build. It's a big problem in now, uh, challenge in scholarly communication. Wherever we get with technology is being used positively, constructively for helping, for enhancing human development. And there are also people who misuse the technology. In, in scholarly communication, one of the biggest misuse is plagiarism and then the predatory journal we talk. Predatory journal is fake journals. Predatory journal is nothing but fake journals. Predatory is fake, fake journals. So uh, all wrong things, you know, you copy from somewhere and put it, and then you put a volume number, put an issue number, and and who will do that? We, we librarians have a role to do. So we, we advise our, through the library, we advise our users don't go to this way, unless avoid these things. And we never subscribe to, and these are, some of them are available 
steps in the advertising and on the mark do a lot of marketing so as a yeah, like you, yeah. you try to understand what is the what is the real journal what what is the respectable journal and what is the fake journal <sighs> Using this call, quality as call, like you know, we give some kind of a grading, you know, which are the best quality, then, which are the best journals, who are the best scientists, which is the which is the best PhD thesis, and some kind of a giving some kind of a rating, okay. and we have tools for that. for SEC. One of the tools is in fact the general impact pattern is some kind of a great second it's a numerical value uh SNT X color nature. Okay, higher the impact factor, higher the prestige of the journal. The standards the tables are available, and these tables are <coughs> released by an by a play by a by an organization called Institute for Scientific Or it's a company now. Sometimes you get impaired factor as a sharp notes in this. The, the citation metrics actually help in, in track. The more number of times a particular journal is cited, more it's in <laughs> Citation means again, that's again another word. In the second semester, we will teach you what, what is we'll Take it further in the next semester. In the next. And uh, in, in the electronic resources book, we have written. If some of you have received the books, it will be there. Those books. What is impact factor? We'll be with it in the second sense. So these are some of the uh, factors which help help librarians in assessing the quality of scholarly content. The quality is again a, a new role that we librarians have. Now, identifying the quality, what is quality? And sensitize the users on, on, on this quality. And we tell the users publish only in these qualitative quality. And also use only the read only this quality. Be, be aware of, you know, be careful about the fake channels, be careful about the period. And on the internet, you know. It's very easy to publish. Anybody can publish anything. So we librarians, you know, we are the torch bearers of sensitizing, identify what is real and New area and very, very challenging area.
then we also have another phenomena that is having is social media something very interesting that's happening using social media as a first canal you you give your, your twitter you give your youtube your various kinds of social media platforms you share your research share your content you you know suppose the libraries are also we are we are using social media like for example we have whatsapp groups and uh, we have book reviews for example we we buy a new book for the library Like okay. and somebody will read read that book, okay, review on that. Oh, this is very good book. This particular chapter is very good in that, and uh, I like the way he has exposed that. I like, and this is something new, and that new phenomena has been reported in that. So some, so I recommend reading. So some whoever reads it will put it in the library, social media website platform about the book. then somebody else will say, also say this is something wrong in that don't read this book there is some problem with this book and uh, whatever is written is not acceptable so like that you know there are both positive as well as negative uh, negative feelings are expressed in social media about uh, written that has recently we we and as a library a library facilitates this library what we do is we facilitate Facilitate discussion. We facilitate discussion on the on the content that we buy. For example, it could be a decent article, it could be a PhD or a thesis. But you can say yes, PhD thesis is made available. People will comment on that. How can it be true? Problem with that. But this is something very good. And people will have a new new way of on you know, looking at it. So, so you 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 promote discussions of, and sir, also we break out, sir. Oh yeah. Sorry, sir. Signal break out, sir. Okay. Signal length, my middle ground. That's why you know, still on section. No, it's it's a complex kada. Now the great one is that I have a broadband internet at home. I have high end internet. Now I have a problem. And then I am not going to get it. And there are so many computers now. Then I talk and you will listen. In between, a lot of it goes through several networks. Kada. Okay, sir. Open access again is is again as I said, it's important. That's again an emerging. Open access is an emerging trend. For me, it is that whatever you pay, whatever is costly, uh, is qualitative one. There used to be. Uh, Feeling and matter. So double is contained. Yeah, the my quality in the Japan they want that. One double bit book got that. One one cost is that one that the content from the one is from one authority. Now it's not like so open access. What is that? A lot of free of content is available. A lot of very very value and high high quality content is available. Uh, it's free is not uh, cheap and the free is not uh, is not inferior in quality so that is what we want i want to communicate open access and open access is a method of uh, communicating it's a phenomena to to disseminate content so open through open access there will be good content there will be bad content all kinds of content will be there so so but still you know very high quality content is also available in the open access so here is our librarian's role is library role here library has a role here
This is again something big one, making content discoverable. Something interesting. And we have a big role here to do that. Making content discoverable. Whatever. These are the new technologies that we are talking about these days. Previously, we used to say you prepare a cataloging anyone. We used to say cataloging and classification in LI. You organize the books, you put a number and then subject number and keep it in the library so that that book or whatever journal we have in a library, people will be able to discover. Okay. You, I, you come, user wants to a library for something in mind, and then uh, we need to take the user to that. So he should be able to discover the book or journal that he wants, the piece that he wants, that he's looking for. So previously we were doing it, man. Now, thanks to the technology, so libraries we are enhancing, we are doing in a big way, making it a content, we call it discovering the story of the information on the internet. Google is one example. For example, Google is a very crude way of doing that. But like Google, we have many in library itself, like on the library portal itself, we have what we call curated federated setting. It's a new phenomenon that the libraries are doing in scholarly communication. So federating searching, what happens in federated searching is single window. To be a single window, to be a single platform, just like Google, to a single search box, you will be able to access whatever library has inside. You now, we have a lot of print material in a library. So whatever print material you have in a library, well, typical library catalog. Okay, You have a one side, you have typical library catalog, and you may be subscribing to some online resource. You might have paid for some you know, pay services. So those pay services are sitting somewhere on the internet remotely. Similarly, we have a lot of open access or free content available on the internet. So my, if I, what federated searching does is, well, what we are doing through the library is we have a single search platform, which will help you in discovering what is inside the library? Maybe a book available on a shelf. It will lead you to it. You will be able to discover that book available in the library. And it may be there in some, in, in, you may be subscribing to some journal, and then it may be there in that journal. So you take, you lead the user to that uh, subscribe. Or something is available free of cost and make. Anybody can access anywhere. So you, you have a, you know, you, you you create a single window which all three can be combined. All three, uh, you give a subject word or a keyword, suppose you want something, say vaccine for coronavirus. And then you may be having something available in the library, something which is subscribed, something which is there free of cost and let us see National Library of Me, some other library somewhere. So like a library working as a gateway of covering the content something that we are doing now. And this is the latest trend in scholarly communication. Making content discoverable and libraries are participating in this field. Because we are experts in 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 index. Our role is we may not be experts in technology, but we are we 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 are good in Okay, we are good in indexing content. So what we do, what is indexing again? Labeling the content for the retrieval. Okay, we label the words or label the items so that we enable content, you know, make it retrievable, make it identical. So now some of the library, library repositories that we are developing today is, is discoverable through general purpose engines like Google. Google, even Google, if we do it using certain standards, even Google will follow that. Another phenomenon is scholarly communication that you have. Standards are important. Two systems have to talk to each other. The standard is easy. 
like for example similarly uh, we have i think the book we have given somewhere uh, citation standards how to give a citation bibliographic site how to how to you know quote a reference how to cite a reference there are standards for that you have given mla standard model language so similarly aps american Size, size, citation styles we call it is standard skills and this is all promoted by libraries and we have software packages for this. Packages and we in the library we can buy some of these are not expensive. You can buy those like packages and uh, you can. So when somebody is writing a PhD thesis, for example, they come to the library and then make use of these software packages. So automatically it formats it what citation style in particular. So how other name should come, how year should come, how the title should come. And where full stop should be there, where comma should be there, where italic should come, where underlining should come, okay, where hyphen should come, how to give page number, start page, ending page, whether to put a full stop at the end or not. So all these are international standards are available. And uh, we librarians, we are good in the making because we are strong in cataloging. We have we teach cataloging at SMLS. We are fundamentally strong in catalog, library catalog. So how to describe a book? We are, we, are, we are experts in describing a book. Similarly, we are, we are experts in describing any content that is there anywhere on the internet. Okay. So I think time is up. That's what I wanted to share with you. If you have any questions, we will spend a couple of minutes. Hello, sir. sir, can we have this PPT in uh, WhatsApp group, sir? Mm, is the PPT there? Is I have more, some more PPTs I can share you. <laughs> okay, sir. You ask it. I have, I have plenty of ready-made PPTs. I can share you on that. No problem. Okay, sir. Okay. I will give it to Karen. Karen will share with you. Right. Hello. Ah, uh, tell me. Sir, can you give the, uh, some important questions on these topics? What have you have explain, explained in this one? Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. So, uh, we have nine chapters. Yeah, yeah. In this. Okay. Yeah. And uh, in the exam, final mm. exam, we have different variety of questions. You have short note questions. Uh, yes. Uh, you have a, also kind of essay kind of questions. Yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. And you also have some kind of either or questions are also available. Yes, sir. We just want to give some important questions on this main yeah, topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every unit, so we have nine units. Yes, yes. Sir. So yes. nine units, you will compulsorily get at least one question from each unit. Okay, sir. Minimum one question you will get from each unit. Okay, sir. So so then, since you have in, in, in the CBCS system, mm. we, have, we have ample size. Okay. That doesn't mean that you should use only half the book. Okay. Complete book. And okay. we, have, uh, we also have one mark questions, a lot of one mark questions. Okay. So can you please share the question paper at least for the model? What yeah, question doing? papers, old question papers. I think we, if you, you join some of these WhatsApp groups, we'll put it in the WhatsApp group. Karen will put it in the WhatsApp groups. We have at least okay, four, sir. there will be at least four question papers, previous question papers. Okay, sir. But for a short, short notes persons, one mark persons, you need to read the text thoroughly. Okay, sir. So, uh, long questions will be how many? How, how, what is the mar uh, for long questions? For uh, max sir? for one each question carries. We think each question carries ten marks. Ten marks. Ten marks. Ten marks. Okay. Can it be ten and ten? Can it be twelve and a half? I did. I did yeah. different kinds of questions. Some of your uh, questions are some of the papers are for sixty marks. Some are for hundred marks. I think scholarly yeah, communication uh, is for sixty marks. I think. 60 marks only, yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, 60 marks. 60 marks, no, 10 marks will be, essay question will have 10 marks. 
ఎక్స్ట్రీమ్లీస్ so in open access definitely there will be an essay question a broad open question on open access and there will be shorter questions you know like what is doaj hmm you know like what is the repository <laughs> similarly what is impact factor what is plos okay these small okay. small subheading that you have in the book you know they may come as a short question okay sir so the it's very difficult yeah. to say what is important. nothing is unimportant how this will is nothing which is unimportant in scholarly communication okay so uh, we have cared from the for the that's why we have not made it very bulky deliberately we have not made it bulky the book is not bulky it's just very thin yes yes i have thin. gone through that one sir it's not bulky it's no? yeah yeah but, yeah sir uh, yeah tell me sir question paper me rahega sir it's okay ఎగ్జామినేషన్ఫోర్ ఎగ్ i think it depends on the exam la in fact where if you see the world question paper four years question paper right told kada so whole question paper should be in any question paper i mean da na kara dinta kara sweet inu anna mai va ma avanu kar try cheyandi la excuse me sir yeah sir uh, are you provide a ppt sir notes or something in this group or whatsapp group okay we'll take some reading material here dil gurinche kaadu inga anni subjects gurinchi padistam you know you need to pass the exam you need to score well in all these subjects not only other community so we will definitely share some reading material with you other than the course material okay or sir or we will give you some links తర్వాత మా పాత లెసన్స్ కూడా మీకు యూట్యూబ్ లో ఉన్నాయి మా యూనివర్సిటీ వాళ్ళు వీ హెవ్ కెప్ట్ నియర్లీ ఫోర్ థౌజండ్ వీడియోస్ యూట్యూబ్ లో పెట్టాము అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ కొన్ని మనం ఇట్లా మేము మీతో ఇన్ఫార్మల్ గా మాట్లాడని కొన్ని ఉన్నాయి తర్వాత కొన్ని మేము దూరదర్శన్ టెలివిజన్ నుంచి కూడా కొన్ని లెసన్స్ టెలికాస్ట్ చేస్తుంటాము ఇంత ముందు చేసాము ఆ టెలివిజన్ లో చేసిన లెసన్స్ కూడా దే ఆర్ అవైలబుల్ ఇన్ యూట్యూబ్ మనకి యూనివర్సిటీలో స్టూడియోలో కొన్ని లెసన్స్ తయారు చేసాము మేము రికార్డ్ చేసాము ఆ లెసన్స్ కూడా మీకు యూట్యూబ్ లో దొరుకుతాయి అవి ఎందుకు ఆ లింక్స్ కూడా షేర్ చేస్తారు మీకు వాట్సాప్ గ్రూప్ లో యాక్టివ్
సార్ వాటర్ గ్రూప్ లింక్ ఇస్తారు అదర్ దెన్ కోర్స్ మెటీరియల్ వి వాంట్ ఎనీ పిపిటిస్ ఆర్ లైక్ దట్ వి విల్ కవర్ సమ్ టాపిక్స్ టు రీడ్ ఓకే వి విల్ వి విల్ వి విల్ గివ్ యు and there are lot of things to learn how to work you have learned how to search as a librarian we should be able to find it over said that and internet we have huge resources we need to know that you should know scholarly and cool videos are available beyond the course material also you can get a lot of content from the internet you can join and under entry sir నాకు మ్యూజిక్ రైట్స్ లేవు అయ్యా నేను ఐ ట్రైడ్ బట్ ఐ డోంట్ హావ్ ద రైట్ నెక్స్ట్ టైం సార్ వాట్సాప్ గ్రూప్ లింక్ ఇస్తారా సార్ హలో నేను వాట్సాప్ గ్రూప్ లో లేనమ్మా ఎందుకంటే వాట్సాప్ లో టూ ఫిఫ్టీ టూ ఫిఫ్టీ నే ఏమో పెట్టడానికి లేదు కదా ఇప్పుడు మన యూనివర్సిటీ లో యూనివర్సిటీ లో థర్టీన్ హండ్రెడ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ హైదరాబాద్ లో అందుకని వన్ వాట్సాప్ గ్రూప్ ఇస్ నాట్ సఫిషియంట్ దెర్ ఆర్ సెవరల్ వాట్సాప్ గ్రూప్స్ So I am not a member in these WhatsApp groups. You talk to our academic consultant, Dr. Sharan Kumar. Okay? If Kavalanta you share the number, he will... I think some students will run their numbers on the computer. I'll teach them our numbers. Okay. Okay. నేను ఇక్కడ మీ ఒక నంబర్ ఇస్తున్నాను ఆ నంబర్ మీరు కాల్ చేయండి హలో వన్ మినిట్ ఐమ్ షేరింగ్ వన్ నంబర్ ఐ షేర్ వన్ నంబర్ ఇన్ ది చాట్ బాక్స్ కిరణ్ అని ఒక నంబర్ ఉంది హీస్ అకాడమిక్ కన్సల్ట్ యువర్ అకాడమిక్ కన్సల్టెంట్ so he will put you in the in one of the whatsapp groups link button sir already sir okay great so whatsapp Hello? groups are, there are many whatsapp groups endukante one whatsapp group cannot hey sir rendu unnai group 1 group 2 rendu unnai sir ha endukante adi 256 tar teesukuntam kada manaki 1300 students unnaru avunu group 1 full ayipindi group 2 di hello sir okay so you talk to Hello. kiran and he will help you with that hello yeah tell me thank you sir for your lecture okay thank you we'll meet again all the best to you do well in the exam read well read the book well class complete na sir apde ha okay tell that your class one more class will be done and competence will take class now okay okay thank you sir Thank you, sir. Thank you. Hello? 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 నెక్స్ట్ లెక్చర్ హలో నెక్స్ట్ హలో సార్ సార్ లెఫ్ట్ సార్ లెఫ్ట్
చాట్ లో ఉంది బ్రదర్ చూసుకోవచ్చు కదా మన చాట్ అని ఉంటుంది చూడండి స్క్రీన్ పైన కిరణ్ ఫ్యాకల్టీ ఏదన్నా ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ ఉంటే మనకు గ్రూప్ లో పెట్టేసేయండి సార్ ఇప్పుడు ప్రతి ఒక్కరిని కన్సల్ట్ అవడం కూడా అంతగా ఆయన కూడా ఒక ఇబ్బందికరం కదా ఇండివిజువల్ వన్ ఆర్ టూ పర్సన్స్ ఏదైనా అప్రోచ్ అయినప్పుడు ఏదన్నా ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ లేటెస్ట్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ ఉంటే మన గ్రూప్స్ లో షేర్ చేసేస్తే మనకు అందరికి ఇది యూజ్ఫుల్ గా ఉంటుంది అన్నది నా ఆలోచన టెక్స్ట్ బుక్స్ ఆల్రెడీ వచ్చేసాయి కదా సార్ అందరికి ఇంకా టెక్స్ట్ పేపర్స్ ఎందుకు సార్ అదే అదే ఇంకా టెక్స్ట్ పేపర్స్ అవసరమే లేదు అవి చదువుకుంటే సరిపోతుంది కాకపోతే మన సార్ వాళ్ళు మనం ఎట్లా ఒక ఇదిగా అంటే ఎప్పుడు ఆన్లైన్ క్లాసెస్ వచ్చేవాళ్ళు తక్కువ రాకుండా డైరెక్ట్ గా ఎగ్జామ్స్ కు వచ్చే వాళ్ళం ఎక్కువ కాబట్టి ఏదన్నా సార్ వాళ్ళని రిక్వెస్ట్ గా మనం కనీసం మినిమం పాస్ అయ్యే దానికి క్వశ్చన్స్ తీసుకొని అవి వరకు కాస్త చదువుకోగలిగితే బాగుంటది అన్నది అనుకుంటున్నా అందుకే నేను అందుకనే సార్ ను కూడా ఇందాక అడిగింది మీరే కదా సార్ క్వశ్చన్ పేపర్ ఇస్తారు ఏదన్నా టూల్స్ ఎవరు సార్ అంటే అదే ఒక పది క్వశ్చన్స్ అయినా కూడా సార్ ఖచ్చితంగా చెప్పగలిగితే ఆ పది క్వశ్చన్స్ నేర్చుకొని అట్లీస్ట్ అయ్యన్న పాస్ మార్కులు ఒక నలభై కదా మనకి మళ్ళీ పాస్ అందుకని అనేసి సార్ వాళ్ళని ఏదన్నా అట్లీస్ట్ ఒక టెన్ టు ఫిఫ్టీన్ క్వశ్చన్స్ మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ క్వశ్చన్స్ అడిగి తీసుకొని అవి గ్రూప్ లో షేర్ చేసుకోగలిగితే అందరికి గట్టిన అయిపోవచ్చు అన్నది అనుకుంటున్నా మీరేమంటారు ఫ్రెండ్స్ క్లోజింగ్ ద మీటింగ్ ఇంకా అయిపోయింది